Hi, you know what I really, really, really want to do right now? Talk about Nintendo. Talk about Pokemon. We had a Pokemon Direct this morning as I'm filming this, yesterday as you're watching this, and I actually didn't totally hate it. The online reception to it was very mixed. We're gonna go through the Direct here in a second, but I already want to start with my overarching point to this video, which is... I love everything they're adding in to Pokemon Sword and Shield. I think this DLC looks amazing. In fact, everything they are adding in is so much of what I asked for out of the original base game. Like, I talked about how I loved the wild area. It was my favorite part of the game, but it felt empty and it felt small and there just wasn't enough to it and then here these two DLCs are about to come out this year at some point and add to the wild area two more areas which in themselves are more expensive than the original wild area. Not to mention 200 of the missing Pokemon being added back in, some kind of what looks like an original concept for a story and just a load of new stuff. But here is where my issue comes into play with all of this. While I loved it all, and I'm excited for it all, it shouldn't have been DLC. It, it just shouldn't have. A lot of the complaints I had with Sword and Shield was that it was missing a lot of the stuff that this DLC has. I was missing originality. I was missing an original story. I was missing more areas to explore that weren't so linear. I was missing, well, we were all missing a lot of Pokemon. The game felt underbaked and unfinished. It felt like it was released in 2019 because they wanted it released in 2019, despite the fact they obviously had a lot of really ambitious goals for this game because we're seeing those goals now after the fact. So again, I really don't know how to feel about it. I have become torn because to some extent it is what it is. What happened happened and I, we can at least look forward to getting more content in Pokemon, but it's content that I, I feel should have been in the game originally for the same $60 price without having to fork out another 20 bucks for all this DLC. Why wasn't it in there originally? Why did the base game feel so empty and rushed when I see so much ambition and creativity and originality in what's coming? It's a really weird situation to be in with this game. I mean, there's also a conversation of, oh, so they didn't add in all the Pokemon like we wanted, but now if we pay, we get 200 more. Still not all of them, but 200 more. And I'm split on this as well, because I was always okay with there not being every single Pokemon. That was just my personal preference. And the thought of having two new DLCs in expansive new areas without any new Pokemon to find seems pointless and boring. So it kind of needed to have Pokemon, new Pokemon. But then it makes me think, was that the plan? Did they only put 400 in the base game so that they could make expansion packs later and they knew that they would want to put Pokemon that weren't already in the game in the expansion packs, otherwise people wouldn't buy them, so they didn't put all these Pokemon in the original game when they could have. It's just, it's just a lot of questions about this. And then, when you come to grips with all of that and you try and rationalize it in any way you want to rationalize it, you can then further look into the fact that they have said they essentially aren't doing other revisions of these Pokemon games. Like, usually we have things like Pokemon Black and White 2 or Pokemon Moon and Sun Ultra Moon and Sun, where we essentially do go out and spend a another $60 on what amounts to just a lot of DLC. And in this case, they're not doing it this time. There's not going to be an Ultra Sword and Shield. There is just going to be this DLC instead, which adds in what looks to me like more content than we would usually get rebuying an entire game at $60. So I don't know. It's like, is it good? Is it bad? Is $30. It a lot for what we're getting? Or is it actually pretty cheap in comparison to rebuying a whole full price new game later on down the road? Or is it kind of crappy that they're selling us stuff that should have been in the base game in the first place? And then who are we to say what should have been in the base game in the first place? So I think where I'm drawing my personal line, it's just that it is what it is. I put a hundred hours into the base game, so clearly I got my money's worth even though I feel like the game should have had more content in it in the first place. It's a really interesting situation and I can definitely see both sides of this argument and I've kind of just fallen in the middle. I'm gonna buy it and I'm gonna play it and I'm gonna have a lot of fun with it. So hey, what else can I do? Oh, by the way, on my other channel, which I just started today, uh, I, I talked about my new set and everything, but if you didn't watch that or you haven't subscribed to my new channel,
Oh, gee, thanks. Appreciate you. <laughs> then I want to uh, brag about something for a second because I built this <laughs> and I feel very good about it. There was a big hunkin' ugly black curtain and curtain rod that you could see behind me in some of my videos and it always annoyed me. I don't know why. I got OCD or something. I couldn't stand it. So I took a couple weeks off for a, a lot of personal reasons, but I used that time to build some sets. I built a set right here for my new channel and I also built Technically, this is a set. I built a wall out of 2x4, slapped some panel board on it, and then screwed shelves into the before-mentioned 2x4, and I was able to actually make something that looks nice behind me, and it's not just a cluster muck of a bunch of boxes thrown together, and you can't really even tell what's going on. Okay, I want to go through the Pokemon Direct, because there was a couple of surprises. Well, literally just a couple of surprises. But I want to touch on the fact that the word Direct is being stretched so far at this point. We used to have Indie Directs too, and Nintendo changed those to Indie Worlds or something like that, but they are, Nintendo really likes using that word Direct because we give it so much hype, because we want actual Directs. So now Nintendo is slapping the word Direct on any kind of announcement they have and trying to put together any kind of what resembles a Direct. This Pokemon Direct, it's weird because it's not really, is it? It's kind of just like a trailer for Pokemon Mystery Dungeon and then a trailer for Pokemon DLC. They've just put them together and they've slapped direct on the title. And the reason why I'm bringing it up is because I feel like it helps and it hurts them. It helps Nintendo when it comes to people searching and finding this direct because people love directs and they want to watch directs. It's a big word for Nintendo, Nintendo Direct. It's huge. Everyone talks about it. So throwing direct, Nintendo Direct, Pokemon Direct onto this thing, it gets more people to watch it but it also builds a lot of expectation because we love directs and directs are exciting. A lot of stuff happens in directs, a lot of announcements, a lot of surprises. So when you give something a name like direct, we kind of all go into it with an expectation of being overwhelmed and excited and seeing a lot of cool things. So when we essentially are just seeing two trailers for a Pokemon remake and DLC for the Pokemon game that just came out, it, it feels way more lackluster than if they had just said, oh, and we have an update on Pokemon Sword and Shield DLC coming out. Not as many people would watch it and get hyped for it, but not as many people would get confused and let down by it. I don't really have a point that I'm trying to make. As far as the trailers went, it was perfectly exciting if you're a Pokemon fan. Uh, I never played the Mystery Dungeon games. I always wanted to. I always thought they looked really interesting. A Pokemon game where there's no trainer and you play as the actual Pokemon and, and it's, it's just a different take on the Pokemon RPG franchise. They're beloved games and I'm sure a lot of people are bouncing off their seats, can't wait to play them. I'm just still kind of waiting for the Pokemon game I want. I don't know if that's just me, <laughs> if I'm the only one. I'm still waiting for that next generation Pokemon game. That Pokemon game that I've been dreaming of since I was a kid. And I just keep getting remakes and apps and Sword and Shield. <laughs> anyway, uh, I will say I am going to play Pokemon Mystery Dungeon for the first time when it comes to Switch. The art style I thought looked really charming, if not a little bit off-putting but I, I love it, so I'm not complaining. And I know nothing much about the game other than that. The trailer for it also was kind of boring. I'm not gonna, it was a boring trailer, but I'm still excited for the game. Well, as excited as I can be. I'm, it's Pokemon, you know? Then the direct moved straight into all the DLC talk and that, and that was the rest of the, that was it. There was Mystery Dungeon and you, I'm, it's why, it's not really a direct Nintendo. It's kind of just you're announcing two things, but anyway. I mean, I, I, again, I like it. I'm happy with it. Cool. I can't wait to play it. But like June and Autumn, it seems like they're announcing this really soon. Like considering the games kind of just came out and there's already kind of a stigma around Game Freak right now and people are not happy with them. It seems weird to already announce DLC, paid DLC for more Pokemon because you know that People aren't gonna take that the right way. And I think that also played into a lot of people being confused and disappointed. Not me, I, I was good. I just thought it was a weird choice. A couple of little sneaky pictures of concept art they threw in here. It looks like Squirtle and Bulbasaur are finally gonna be in the game. I think it also showed G-Max evolutions or variants of uh, like Venusaur and uh, 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 Blastoise. There's a new Galar region version of Slowpoke and depending on what item you use from what region of these two DLCs that are coming out, it will change into a different kind of of evolution 
thing. There's a new legendary, the little uh, be karate bear panda. I don't, I can't, I'm doing a really bad job here. I'm bad at names. I think they're adorable. You just get given it apparently from the Kung Fu master guy that's training you and then you level them up and depending on uh, which way you want to go, there's like a dark type and a water type with different fighting styles. I don't know. I think it's really clever. There's a new legendary in the second DLC, which looks fine. The little Triforces on it. That's cool. Oh, I should have mentioned this earlier, but something I appreciated that they have done is even if you don't buy the DLC, trainers and players that have the DLC will be able to trade Pokemon that you can only get in the DLC back and forth with the people that don't have the DLC, which I like that. It would be kind of really crappy for them if they after all of those complaints, they, they literally held the Pokemon behind a paywall. It's not. You kind of have to pay if you want to go and catch them and find them for yourself. But if you really want them in your game, you can just have a trainer that has them in the DLC to send them to you. I think that's really clever. And then with the home as well app or whatever, I think you can trade from uh, Let's Go as well into your game. So there's ways to get these Pokemon that are releasing in your game, even if you don't want to pay for anything, if that's all you care about. And I think that was a really good move. It would be really sketchy. <laughs> that was the event. I wasn't sure if I was gonna make a video on it, but a lot of people wanted me to make that video on it, and honestly, I just needed to get my headspace out of where it's been the last couple weeks, but especially the last couple of days. I also want to talk about all these rumors about the Switch Pro and all of that, but that's gonna have to wait a second because I, one thing at a time. I'm excited, okay? It is my opinion that I'm excited for all this DLC to release. I don't care, I gotta spend more money, it's fine, it's whatever, it is what it is. All this stuff should have been in the game in the first place, but I can't change that now. Alright, bye.